So we were talking about pre-need, how to make it relevant to today's consumer. What are they really looking for? What do you see at Cypress Lawn being important to cut through all the noise in the Bay Area and you know, so many messages coming to them to really communicate the importance of pre-need today? Well, I think we need to find uh, an avenue that they would find interesting to even listen to what what is pre-need all about. Um, we found very successful ways of, uh, one of them is by having dinners and inviting people to dinner. And the dinner has to be at a pretty nice, decent place. Can't be McDonald's or... Um, <laughs> And we, we try to make sure we keep it short, 15, 20 minutes, uh, with a little presentation involving the audience and asking them some trivial questions and making it fun for them. And, and our goal at these events are just to get a name, an address, and a phone number and promising them that we'll be uh, following up with them and giving them some basic information, opening the floor to answer any of their questions. Sometimes they have questions that they don't feel comfortable in asking, you know, generally, but because at this dinner we say you can ask anything about a funeral or a, a cemetery question, we're, we're here to answer them. So kind of taking the taboo out of it a little yes. bit. Yeah, exactly. Just making it fun. Most of those people are healthy. They're not thinking they're going to die tomorrow. So it's something, a conversation that they don't feel threatened by because they're not sick or they're not planning for their death today. But at least they can ask questions. So you've worked in a lot of different markets, Hawaii, San Diego, Southern California, now Northern California at Cypress Lawn. And, you know, different markets, where do you see consumers expecting? You know, what do they what do they expect out of our industry today, you know, across different markets or even just in the Bay Area? What do you feel like they're looking for from funeral homes and cemeteries? I think they're looking for, depending on the ethnic group, actually, is very important um, for our ethnic groups, Chinese, Hispanics, Filipinos, they want someone who understands them, number one, whether it be by the language, by their cultural uh, customs. Uh, if, if for say, a Filipino family comes in and they get someone who has never done a Filipino service or hasn't talked to Filipinos and they try to guide them in a different way, they're not going to be successful and they're not going to get future um, family members and heritage in because they're going to have a bad experience. So we need to make sure that we're clear when we're working with diff different ethnic groups to try to get people who work for us that can work with those groups. Um, and not think that you can have a cookie cutter one person mm -hmm. that can work with a Chinese person or a Filipino or a Hispanic person. Yeah, the authenticity is incredibly important. Um, for the cemetery, obviously we're seeing cremation rates rise. How does the cemetery stay relevant amidst the changing interest in, in disposition and, and also changing desires of the consumer? It's a great question because uh, most cemeteries have thousands of niches, whether they be granite front or glass front, and uh, it's not really relative anymore. It's and, and yet we keep showing it. We could discount them and try to sell them at $50 a piece, and people aren't interested in them. Uh, we need to look at cremation gardens and nature gardens, uh, tree gardens, more natural ways of using our properties for what is relevant today. Well, and Cypress Lawn just receiving their arboretum status yeah. is in a perfect position to do that. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's it's very natural and very beautiful, and but we have to find ways to be able to use that nature to our benefit in, in the cemetery. Thank you. Thank you.